Hey YouTube, welcome back to Artichoke Dip. How you doing guys? For you new subscribers, welcome to the solo RPG community. And for those of you that have been around since the beginning of the channel, from the bottom of my heart guys, thank you so much for making this channel great. If you enjoy this video, or any of my other videos, please click the subscribe button, give me a like, or leave me a comment or a question. I'll be more than happy to get back to you with the answer as soon as possible. So today what I want to talk about is dungeons. What would a good old fashioned RPG be without a dungeon? You know, dungeons is a very loose word used in any tabletop role playing game. And you know, depending on the game you're playing, if you're playing a modern game and possibly you're searching through a house or an abandoned farm keep, you know, they would Technically, it depending on how you look at it, it'd be a dungeon. And I'll explain that here in a minute. And, or if you're playing a futuristic game like Battletech or Robotech or D20 Mecha and you're driving large mechanized battle mechs, let's say you're having a uh, an all-out fight or search party through a large factory with Areas that connect with hallways and stairs and doors. I guess you could actually also call that a dungeon. So you see what I mean how dungeon is kind of used very loosely. Now, of course, when you hear the word dungeon, the first thing we all think of is the fantasy role-playing game Dungeons and Dragons. But fantasy role-playing any subterranean area they're going to refer to as a dungeon but for the sake of this video I'm going to refer to it as dungeon <clears throat> that's going to blanket everything across the board I'm going to break it up into four categories and it's going to help you guys to build your own dungeon generators now maybe some of you out there you already have your way and it works for you and that's great for those of you that are just getting into this hobby and maybe you're new to it and you don't know where to go, I can understand that and I hope this video helps. So when I look at a dungeon, and especially with my dungeon generator, I have broken it down into four main groups. And those are your doors, your tunnels or what I like to refer to as your network because it actually spreads out and connects all the other rooms together your rooms and then your encounters so let's talk about the first one doors so it's very simple to do guys and before you put pencil to paper or if you're doing it on a computer paper a paperlessly <laughs> I can't talk today um, first thing you got to think of is how you want to actually organize all your tables for your random generation. Now, one thing that I've used and I've had great success out of is I will utilize a set of playing cards. And the nice thing I like about the playing cards is that, of course, you have your ace all the way through to your suit cards or even if you don't know what I mean I'm talking about your jack king queen and um, with the suits themselves which is really nice to do now when I say suits I'm talking about you got your four suits you have your hearts diamonds clubs and spades it's very easy to make subcategories from that so you could draw a three of hearts and it could tell you a basic thing about your dungeon but it could also go into a subcategory and give you more information if you wanted to do it that way and you could of course leave your jokers as um, something completely large and epic like I don't know fire breathing dragon we'll say and you could leave your actual higher face cards for 
more elaborate designs, stuff like that. And that's the way that I've done it, and it's worked out great for me. Now, I have rewritten my dungeon generator over and over and over until I tweaked it to the way that I like it and I like to use it. So, one option is for creating your tables and the randomness is playing cards. Second thing could be percentile dice, which I do like percentile dice and there a lot more of my tables are in percentile now than I had in years past with playing cards. Or we could go strictly old school, 20 cider. Or you could go silhouette, use 3D6 and have your tables that way generated from a 3 to an 18. So we'll leave that up to you. So the first thing with your door is we want to figure out is the door types. So your first category, you know, and what I mean your door type is, I should say, what kind of material is your door made out of? <clears throat> is it stone? Is it wood? Is it steel? Is it iron? You know, perhaps it's titanium. Whatever. So you use your imagination with that. And to make it simple for starting out, I would choose four. Just stick with four basic types of door materials. And then from there, you're going to want to move into a subcategory. And you're going to want to know what kind of door is it. What I mean by that is it could be a swing door. It could be a portcullis door. It could be a trap door. It could be a cellar door. It could be a double main entrancey, entranceway door. It could be, well... It could be a doghouse door, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm just, just throwing it out there for a little humor, but with all the different types of doors there are, and I mean, any type of Dungeon Master manual if you pick up and you go through will give you tons of examples, and those are some of the best places to actually borrow them from, so go through there and decide what door type. Keep it simple, I would choose six to begin with, so... Now, you're going to want to put another subcategory table onto that to answer the next question, what if the door is trapped? You're going to want to know what kind of trap it is and the damage that the trap will do. So, with that, you're going to want to... There are so many traps, you may want to keep it basic for starters. Maybe pick four traps to begin with. And you could do something like a arrow trap, a pit trap, a fire trap and maybe a mm, what about a magical trap and that will break things up a little bit so then that will give you your door types and it's going to give you a lot of information by just rolling a few dice you're going to know what kind of door what the door is made out of traps if there are any traps what kind of traps now the fourth table you want to put in there which will be another subcategory is what if your characters want to get past this door and they want to bust down the door so you're gonna to have to put in the subcategory and you can do it however you would like to do it uh, the easiest way that I've seen yet is to assign a hardness number that would act like an AC number and then your actual points hit points that the door will have before it's destroyed and with that again it when you start out keep it small so pick a few doors four at the most to your subcategory and then add that in there now the last thing you want to do with your door and I know this may sound very daunting actually once you get rolling on it you'll find it's pretty easy if you break it up into these four categories this way the last thing you want to do with the door before moving on to your network and designing that will be the door condition. And what I mean by that is the door stuck, is the door locked, is the door magically sealed, is the door um, 
perhaps enchanted. And by passing through the door, you'll either have, could have an enchantment or a curse placed upon your characters. So as you go through, and with locks, how I've always done it with locks, I've always put a simple lock, a medium lock, and a hard lock. And what I mean by that is if you were a rogue or a thief trying to pick that lock, that's going to reflect the difficulty and the skill level you're going to need to be able to get past that. And if all else fails, you have your subcategory chart of how much damage can it take before you bust the door down to pass on through. Now, we got doors out of the way, let's talk about the networking. Networking is pretty simple. And start out fairly simple and think about basic shapes that you would like to see in your dungeon. Now, they could be straight hallways, they could be T intersections, it could be four way corridor intersections, it could curve to the left, curve to the right, or it could be an erupt 90 to the left, erupt. 90 to the right it's all up to you it's up to you and with this start out very simple maybe start out with six now out of the six add at least three of those put room now you may be going wait a minute why would I put that in there I'm going to explain that in a second so as you're venturing through your dungeon and you're rolling to see how the network turns and does all that you're going to come across rooms and that's why you want to put at least two to three in there so as the dice roll or you pull the cards your rooms are going to generate and it will actually balance out pretty well believe it or not um, your networking area compared to your rooms now as I said networking is a little bit more simple than the even the door is how I do the networking and is I take one D6, I roll it, so if I roll a three, and let's say at a straight hall, and I got 30 feet of it before I gotta roll my table again. So as I'm drawing this out on my map and I'm doing my, my dungeoneering, and I'm watching this dungeon take place because I don't like to sit down and pre-draw out a dungeon and put all the encounters and everything in there because you know where everything's at. I like it to be very random. I don't want to know what's behind the next corner or what's in the next room. I really don't. I like to keep that completely a surprise. So when you come to the room, what I do for that is roll 2d6, take those numbers, add them, of course, you add your zero to it, and that's how many square foot you would have. So, if you rolled a four on one, a one on the other, that's 50, so it's a 50 square foot room. Now, rooms, let's talk about rooms. With the rooms, you want to have a category of rooms of its own, which will be the third main category of the dungeon engine and you want to know what's the shape of the room is it triangle square rectangle circular is it natural cavern is it part of a cave system is it an, let's say an insect burrow let your imagination run wild on that and put that on your room generator so as you're playing with your generator and you're pulling your card or rolling your dice, you know after this many feet of traveling down the hallway, let's say the hallway go, makes an abrupt right, which ends into a room. You walk into the room and you roll your next table to find out that it's a rectangular shaped room and perhaps maybe it has a natural depression in the center of the room that has collected water. So it almost appears if it has a natural occurring pool in the center of the room. And there you go. Now, when it comes to actually putting in the descriptions of the rooms, with that, keep it simple, but you'll see as you play through the first time, you're probably going to want to add a lot more to that. So you're going to get a lot more descriptive detail about the room 
and the room layout. And that's the best part of it. I mean, and you can use this generator to double as anything, whether you're going through a wizard's tower or a old foul dungeon through a scientist's laboratory or maybe in a modern day old haunted house. Entirely up to you. So now the fourth thing is encounters. Now what I count as encounters is your monsters, your treasure, and um, your monsters, your treasure. I'm forgetting something here. Hmm. Ah. Not all treasure is going to be gold. It could be magical. So I... I also count that when I'm my dungeon generator as an encounter. So, with your encounter, and I strongly suggest the first dungeon generator that you make, make it simple for first level. So, your first generator, you're going to probably want to put 10 encounters in there. And... So keep them relatively simple. So, you know, you're going to want to put the goblin in there. You're going to want to put the kobold in there. You're going to want to keep the encounters relatively small to begin with. So your characters aren't that overrun. And then how I do mine is you got your list of your 10 encounters to fill your room. So after the sharp curve to the right it ends at the room the room there's a natural occurring puddle in the center of this room and you get past the door to find out that you find a mob of angry goblins that are sitting in there collecting water for their water skins to drink and they don't look too happy to see you so how I do that is I assign 2d6 dice so I have my encounter, I roll it, whatever it may be, and then I roll the dice to see how many are in the room. Now, of course, you can adjust that level at any time. I mean, if you're going to be completely overrun to your characters are not going to come out, obviously, you're going to want to adjust those numbers. You, because there's no point in being overrun unless you want the story to go that way. It's entirely up to you. So then, the next thing I do with the encounters as I go through is the treasure and the treasure tables. Now when it comes to the treasure tables, um, that's something even on my generator that's always constantly building and adding on. Because you could sit and spend an entire day writing down treasure because most of these games, that's what it's about is a treasure. So with a first level, if you think about it, a first level dungeon, you're not gonna find magical armor or you know these really great artifacts in there you're gonna find if you're lucky a couple pieces of gold maybe a type of sword in there you know that type of stuff so start out simple at first keep it simple put your items your treasure in there any magical treasure now when I say magical you know a healing potion could be a magical treasure just saying it doesn't have to be a ring or staff or a wand or a spell book it could be potions it could be scrolls it could be um whatever your heart desires you could put in there and along with your treasure the easiest way i found it is to list the treasure that's in there and then have a subcategory table to tell you exactly the value amount that's in there. So you could run across gold. And it could be two pieces all the way up to 200 pieces. Just depends on how either the playing card is drawn or the dice roll. And I will leave that entirely up to you. Now, with that being said, I hope you get started on your generators here soon. And start making your dungeon generators. Because the next one I want to talk about will be Wilderness. Not in this video, but my next video. And then the one after that I want to talk about uh, world building. Creating worlds. But, once again to recap, real quick. With your dungeons, you're going to want to have, break it up into four main categories. Your doors, 
your networks, which are going to be your tunnels, your stairs, your corridors, your rooms, and your encounters. If you keep it like that with your subcategory tables, you'll see you'll have a pretty efficient, pretty randomized, and interesting dungeon generator that'll keep you occupied for hours. It really will, and you'll have a lot of fun with it. Now, moving on to one other thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is, let's say um, you, perhaps maybe you don't want to make a dungeon generator. Maybe you don't want to put that kind of work into it. There is a book out there that I picked us up years ago. And um, I have had a lot of fun with it. I still use it today with my solo RPGs. I, I still use it a lot. And it is called Toolbox. And it was published by AEG. And the only thing this literally is, is a book of random tables. One after another after another. And it goes through everything from dungeons to wilderness to city to encounters, NPCs, I mean, so on and so forth. As you can imagine, you'll find it in here. Some of the things I like in here, some of the things I haven't. And when I created my own dungeon generator, I actually, some of the stuff came out of here. Some of the stuff came out of, I don't know if you see it right here, which would be the first edition Advanced Dungeons and Dragons Dungeon Master's Guide because I love the actual tables and the matrixes that are in that one. So that's one of my favorite two go-to DM guides. Now, um, some campaign modules out there do have already pre-generated dungeons and you can, of course, you could use that. I'm sure... Um, there's a game system out there called Four Against Darkness. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It's a solo RPG type of game system. And in there, I believe it uses a six-sided dice to generate through a dungeon. That's all it is. It's the dungeon delve. And now I don't own the book. I haven't read through the book. Just from the game reviews I've seen, that's what everybody seems to say about it. To me... Constant dungeon delves would get boring. Um, I like to break it up between dungeons and wilderness and just a vast array of different gaming areas. So I will try to find this and put a link to this in my description. And I'm pretty sure this is still available and you could still purchase this online. The other thing I want to talk about, guys, for you guys just now getting into the hobby, and um, I have um, mentioned this about terrain and tiles, and I know some of it can be extremely expensive, and some of it you can make pretty cheap. One thing I did find, um, I was a couple of towns over, and I found a game store, and I stopped in and checked it out, and I found this. Which is the Dungeons and Dragons, the Dungeon Tiles Master Set, the Wilderness. Now, the box is cool, and I gotta show you this. The box itself will go on a bookshelf. And even the front of the box is a terrain tile, as well as the back. That can be utilized, turned over, and used as a terrain tile. But when you open this thing up, you get a large amount of tiles to put on your game table. And if, as you'll notice, if you look real close, you'll see these white cross marks all the way through here. And this is actually measuring off one inch measurement for your miniatures. So if you were to actually take your miniature and put it on there, you could see how well that actually fits inside of there for movement. Now it has small tiles, larger tiles, it even has a um, compass marking point to put on your game board so everybody knows where north, south, east, and west is. All the way down to they give you larger tiles to use as well. And this is actually 
pretty durable cardboard is what it is and I mean for 20 bucks you really can't go wrong here for 20 bucks you know it's pretty durable pretty cool stuff I'm looking forward to you actually using this um, to do some of my RPGs tonight so I thought it'd be fun 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 so I thought I would share that with you guys and for those of you just getting into the hobby you know this might be something you may want to look into and I'm more than positive if they make a wilderness kit then they do make a dungeon kit as well and it would work great with your new dungeon generator so guys as with all my videos I hope this was in form you know give you some information and really help you out with your games um, I you know want you guys to feel as if you're getting something out of my videos and it's really helping you with your solo RPG experience um, please feel free to leave me comments um, with a dungeon generator um, you know the best way I can explain it and I will recap on that one more time keep it into four categories guys doors and you want to be descriptive as to what kind of door if it's stuck locked jammed trapped portcullis door swing door cellar door what have you you want to have that randomness in there so you have your characters have something to interact with you want to have your networking your tunnels how far do your tunnels run how many feet and which way do they run you want to have your rooms what kind of room types how large are the rooms where are the features in the rooms and of course your encounters which are going to be your monsters your treasure and your magical goodies and all of that that you're actually going to find in these dungeons so i hope this uh helps and if you enjoyed this video please click the subscribe button give me a like leave me a comment it's always appreciated, guys. And uh, until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.